Just like the overwhelming feeling of constant doom and me, clown movies in this channel go hand in hand. So what better way to pay homage to that than to take a look at another slightly questionable horror clown B-movie that leaves me questioning what it really is that I'm doing with my life. The movie begins with someone having a rather unfortunate teeth brushing accident before they sneak out of the house and drive away after their father tries to stop them. I don't know, probably something to do with the crossbow and all of the balloons. Kinda weird, dad. And apparently, the post tooth brushing accident protocol is to head to her uncle's house as she does exactly that. Once she gets there, the power goes out and she's forced to head down into the basement to flip the breaker switch, but as she does, a chair moves as well as various other items. But I guess she just has telekinesis or just assumes her uncle has a particularly drafty house or something, as apparently the random moving objects don't seem to have the effect you'd assume they'd have. After getting the power back on and immediately forgetting that there's a demonic entity following her around the house, she immediately remembers that there's a demonic entity following her around the house as she's given a surprise hug from behind by a terrifying clown creature. In other words, a normal clown. We're then introduced to someone who's unfamiliar with the concept of doors, as she and her roommate are helping their stoner friend move out, who acts as if she's watched one too many bad stoner movies and has decided to create her whole personality around that as she's higher than this movie's budget. Right on. The remaining roommates, Emma and Heather, work at an ice cream shop together with their friend Jonah. An ice cream shop filled with vampires apparently, as it goes from being full to empty as soon as we see a reflection. The sheriff then walks in, and Heather asks if that's the sheriff while looking directly at the sheriff, followed by him doing this weird thing with his mouth. He tells them that they need to close early due to a killing in the area, and he has reason to believe that the killer absolutely hates ice cream. It must have been really bad, the sheriff seems super freaked. Yeah, well murder's a freaky thing. We then see the father from the beginning, Mr. Randall, as he hears someone upstairs, followed by a knock on the door. A knock on the door that causes him to immediately grab the crossbow that he keeps on the table because he's got a serious vendetta against Jehovah's Witnesses. He's then grabbed on the shoulder by an apparent light gust of wind as he turns around to see no one there. So he heads up the stairs, still hearing the voice, but ends up finding a balloon with a slightly threatening note written on it, which seems to greatly aggravate the man, as apparently there's nothing he hates more in this world than red coloured latex filled with air. Later that night, as Emma is trying to sleep, she's rudely interrupted by her dog as he proceeds to lick her fingers, followed by us then seeing said dog sitting on the other side of the room. Turns out this clown's got a reverse foot fetish. She's woken up by a loud noise, and then hides under the covers like the big girl she is, as she hears someone walking around the house. She's then grabbed by the clown, but it turns out to just be a dream, followed by her heading to the bathroom to more than likely empty the contents of her trousers after that, to then be greeted by the sight of a bloody dog collar in the bathroom sink, and a balloon with a date and time on it, because this killer's got a busy schedule to stick to. Confused that her hand soap is looking kinda different these days, she's then grabbed from behind as it was just a dream. Again. The next day, Mr. Randall comes into the ice cream shop because nothing takes the edge off your daughter being brutally murdered quite like a good old fashioned Ben and Jerry's. Emma gets to talking to him, and because of the dream she had last night, she tells Mr. Randall that she thinks what happened to his daughter is now happening to her. And how could you possibly know that? She had a dream. If I thought what happened in my dreams were real, I don't think I'd be allowed around people. His daughter was left a balloon with a date and time on it, and that was the exact time that she was killed. Not exactly sure how he knows exactly what time she was killed, considering he wasn't there, but okay. And according to Emma's balloon, she's got two days. And while driving home with Heather after work, she sees the clown out of the side window, as they're apparently moving at a max speed of 10 miles per hour, before then spotting the sheriff in the middle of the road, as he's got a little tummy ache. And by a tummy ache, I mean he's got no tummy left. After getting out of the car to look at this unusually shaped piece of squirrel roadkill, the car fills up with balloons and then the clown steals it. He drives it back to their home, because I guess he's a nice ghost clown thief whose main mode of transportation is limited to the automotive variety. Jonah shows up for movie night and finds the front door to their place open, and after heading inside, he goes to investigate the Shrek room but is grabbed from behind by the clown. Emma and Heather return home to find him tied to a chair next to a balloon saying I wish you were here. Kind of an inconvenient way to flirt. After Heather and Jonah don't believe Emma about this being a supernatural clown, she gets into her car and leaves because screw those guys. She then spots the woman who was killed in the beginning of the movie in front of the car, as well as the sheriff at the side of the car, still a bit upset about his tummy ache. 
She's then grabbed from behind and responds to this by concussing herself against the steering wheel. But luckily for her, she's found by Heather before she's able to inflict any more internal vehicular related injuries to herself, except not really because it's evil Heather. Emma's found the next day by her boss and because her car won't start, she's given a ride back home, where the evil clown then decides to do something truly despicable, tip over a box of ice cream. And after Emma's dropped off, while the boss is picking up the ice creams and inspecting each one individually for some reason, not only does he just put them in a random box and not into a freezer of some kind, it looks as if he's about to be taken by the clown. But he's just clowning around. <laughs> okay, I'll stop. Emma and Heather then decide to go and pay Mr. Randall a visit, where he tells them that he's figured out that this clown is actually a possessed human who was never given an exorcism, so technically he can be killed. And he figured this out how? Ah yes, where else would you find 100% accurate real paranormal information? Some random internet forum. But after he tells her his master plan to stop this creature, basically use her as bait, she's not exactly keen on the idea and heads back home. And as she does arrive home to see Jonah, the clown breaks the window before magically fixing it somehow and appearing behind the totally non-broken pane of glass. And apparently, Mr. Randall possesses the same glass-breaking ability as he's followed the women home and shoots right through the glass towards the clown, for it to then magically be replaced as he holds the speedrunning world record of replacing windows. The trio are then cornered by the clown as it wows them with its ritualistic mating dance before it grabs Jonah around the throat and gets a little kinky by spitting black liquid all over his face. And just as the clown grabs Emma, he's shot by an arrow and falls to the ground dead quickly followed by me falling to the ground with my hope dead, as this movie keeps going. They then go to work as if nothing happened, as you do, and later that night, Emma's paid a visit from the clown as it knocks on her bedroom window before pouncing up onto her bed and knocking her out. She wakes up, gagged and restrained to a chair, while sitting in front of a table. The clown pops a balloon filled with the guts of her dog and then begins force-feeding them to her. And with Heather not being so happy about it not being one of Emma's five a day and somehow being here, wherever here is, sneaks up behind the clown with a hammer but is grabbed before she can do anything, followed by the clown scurrying off into the darkness like a little kid who's just been caught doing something naughty. I killed your dog and fed it to you. Silly me. We then see the boss's ice cream van pulling up next to Jonah's car, before he then sees what I assume is the clown driving, and driving not very well, as he repeatedly slams into the back of Jonah before appearing in the back seat of his car and attacking him. And for some reason, Emma and Heather then decide to head to the ice cream shop, because I guess Emma wasn't quite full from her dinner, and they find the clown holding their boss, as it had seemed that this clown has got quite the thing for grabbing people by their throat. But suddenly, the boss refers to the clown as Ribcage, and he lets him go. The boss is controlling the clown with all of his mystical ice cream magic. He sits down with Emma and tells her that in 15 minutes, it's going to be her time and that she's going to die. And why does it need to be this exact date and time and not literally all of the other possibilities this clown has had? Well, he suffers from life-crippling OCD. He tells Emma that he's doing this to test people who are scared of clowns. And if they don't overcome their fears, well, then he kills them. Sounds reasonable to me. He sets Ribcage on the pair and leaves. And while hiding to get the clown away from her, she throws an ice cream scoop across the room, directly where Heather is hiding, giving her away in the process. Nice one, Emma. After a lot of back and forth, finding Jonah on the bathroom floor, talking to her with his ribcage ripped open, she runs away and is stabbed in the leg by Heather. She says it was an accident, but I'm sensing that it was some sort of resentment for the whole giving her away thing. Heather then has her ribcage torn open, because it's rude to stab your friends, before Emma finds her boss with a crossbow pointed at Mr. Randall's head. Her time has now come, so the clown launches at her, but using the box cutter previously implanted in her leg, she thrusts it into his neck before repeatedly plunging it into his chest. The boss just kind of goes, oh, followed by the sound of a gunshot and the movie coming to an end. And perhaps the last handful of brain cells bouncing around in my skull also coming to an end as well. Before we finish up, I'd like to just give a big shout out to the YouTube members and patrons who signed up this week, the people who every month continue to support this channel, in the times when it's become incredibly obvious that YouTube doesn't exactly support this type of content. So with there being a pretty big chance that I'm going to get very little to no monetization at all, and not every video being guaranteed to have a sponsor, it's an incredibly good feeling to know that you guys have got my back. So if you're interested in becoming a YouTube member or a patron, not only do you get access to a private Discord server, 
but you get access to all uncensored videos. Trust me, some of them are a lot more intense than this one. So starting off with the YouTube members. A big thank you to Jaguar Jaren, Rajarama, Nima S, Mihaitsa, Gary Frederick, Scott Selter, Thilo XD, Sarah V, Aishwara Pence, Fakis, Airy, Archie Patefield, and Andrew Hudson. And moving over to Patreon, a big thank you to Mystic Riff, George Mino, Mesrick, Elias Cern, Joshi, Jim Fitzgerald, Unholy Pariah, Michael Byrant, Tillman Krusk, Alexandra Herbert, Bryson Opperman, Gutenks, Arctic, Megatron, Holy Matha, No Good Shepherd, Noah Fletcher, Scott Selter, Suck My Dingus You Dingaling, nice one, Mr. 35 Cap, Stephen Marshall, Tome CPM, Taylor Mace, Jovan Ventura, Damas Diego, Taylor Champneys, John, James JR, Aaron Finch, Felix, Aaron Ward, and Rhett Erickson. So once again, a big thank you to all of my YouTube members and patrons, and a huge thank you to everyone else for watching.